Hey folks, Phil the D-Man here. I'm going to show you a little bit about how I use my blower. I've got a couple boxes where the bee escapes. The bees just didn't leave. I don't know why. Every once in a while it happens. It's kind of a cool day. I don't want to just blow the bees out into the, into the air. So I want to drop them down right in front of the hive. I've just uh, I've got a couple empty shells. And I'm just going to blow the bees down into a pile. And then they're going to walk into the hive the minute I'm done. So I'll just show you a bit about how to do that. <laughs> Sorry, first I'm going to pull out a frame just to give myself some space. Pretty nice, that's a nice frame of honey by the way. These, these are my twin hives and I'll be honest with you, I probably should have given them all at least one more box. So they're re these are really heavy boxes. Gonna keep going. I'll do another one. Mm -hmm. Ah, I think we found our problem. We have brood. We have a bad queen excluder. Well, shucks. Mm -hmm. Not much brood. So chances are she took a little trip up. Nothing, nothing fresh. So the queen has been up and back down again, hopefully. quickly turning from a video about how to use a blower into a video about what to do when your queen excluder fails. Now, first thing, to walk those bees back into their hive. You give them a fair chance, they'll find their own way home. Probably useful to just take a quick scan to see if there's any chance of seeing the queen. I don't think she's there. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to swap the 
so it brewed back. Well, we're going to have to do a couple things. I'm gonna... That's an empty box we just put on. This is an empty box we put on when we pulled the honey. We can have a look to see if the queen is here. Take the two best frames. And I'm going to also check this queen excluder. Although I don't have a spear, so I'm kind of wasting my time. But let's see what we. You can see all the drones that hatched out and couldn't get out. So there can't be that big a hole in the queen excluder if the queen could find their way in and the drones could not. What a mess. They should, remember, a queen excluder is also a drone excluder. They can't get through any easier. It's pouring rain. I'm looking down the grid just to see if there's anything that's not straight. It's kind of hard to tell with wax on it. I should say, by the way, we, I did a video earlier on checking queen excluders in the last winter, and that's really paid off for us. The number of problems we've had like this is way down this year. Dave did a fantastic job of checking all of these. We're, we've gone from, you know, one or two a day to one or two a week. Sometimes we've gone a whole week without any. So I encourage you to have a look at that. I just don't see a defect there anywhere. Hmm. Well, if I had a spare, I'd swap it out, but uh, that's actually, I'm using exactly 100% of my queen excluders right now. So we're just going to have to hope that it's all going to work out. Okay. okay. So put this here. Yeah, there. This is, so this brood will hatch out before we get back. To get this honey. Empty. The lid. And you can see here, folks, how the bees are climbing up. Now it's it's a long ways off the ground. If I want it to be helpful, which I do. I would just find a chunk of old wood, build them a bit of a ramp.
and they'll crawl up there. You can see a few exploring the path. And it won't be long before the rest of them find their way. These bees, as they as they think they're getting closer to home, they they stick their butts up in the air and they fan, and that makes a sort of a, a, a chemtrail coming back, and and uh, they're kind of at a, at a dead end road there, but they'll figure that out pretty soon. And then all the other ones will follow. You can see even all these bees back here. They're smelling that, and they're they're coming up the trail. They've just about figured out how to get around the corner here. And the ones, there's a bunch that are underneath and they'll gradually work their way up the side of the pallet and around. It's kind of complicated. My most of my pallets just sit a little lower to the ground. You see now the bridge. The bridge is almost complete. Those bees will start walking in, and all the rest will fall. If you want to speed it up, you can always just brush them a little bit, either with your hand or a bee brush, a tree branch, twigs, the ones at the back that haven't got the memo yet. Just stir it. You can also, a little bit of smoke around the back side of the bees will, will speed things up. Another minute or two and they'll all be inside. So if you've got bees on the ground, you want to get them back inside. Make it easy for them. Build them a little bridge. A lot of, uh, a lot of hive stands often have a slope built into them. I think that's great. Uh, people moved away from that because of the, the risk of uh, ground dwelling uh, pests like uh, hive beetles. People want a nice separation, also ants. You don't want to make it easy for them. So you'd want to, if you're in an area that has those problems, you'd want to remove this once the bees are in. All right, I guess that's it. So get the bees out of the boxes and then the bees back in the hives. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.